Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and today I want to show you how to make a very quick and easy face mask um, from cotton quilting fabric. We've designed it so that you can draw your own template if you don't have access to a printer at the moment, but there will also be a template to download in the description. And it's one of those things. I'm afraid I can't guarantee that this mask is going to protect you from whatever is out there. But in the UK now, it's mandatory to wear these in enclosed spaces like shops and museums. It's also a good idea just to wear them where you are around people that you don't know because it's just, if it can help, you might as well wear it. So, we'll get started. It is very easy. You can hand sew it if you don't have access to a machine, but it is quicker if you use a machine. And to start with, if you're not able to print out the template, you want to draw yourself a 16 centimeter by 17 centimeter square. There is also, make a mark six centimeters down and four centimeters in, five centimeters in, seven and a half centimeters down, five and a half centimeters up, three centimeters in. Now that sounds really complicated. I'm just gonna leave this here so that you can see the markings. And if it helps you, just pause the video so you can make a note of them. And then you very simply draw some curves, just freehand curves from that three centimeter to five and a half centimeter mark, the seven and a half centimeter to five centimeter mark, and then this one here, where you've got the straight line in at four centimetres, this is where it will go under your eyes. So depending on the shape of your face or you know how uncomfortable you find things under your eyes, whether you wear glasses, you can make that dip a bit dippier, if you wish, just so it doesn't keep fidgeting you. Um, and what you should be able to do then when you cut it out is you've got a template that's this shape. So. You need to cut yourself four pieces of fabric. So that's two pieces, right sides together. So you have, oh look. And in true craft, fa craft channel fashion, I've put pink fabric on a pink mat. Normally it's blue fabric on a blue mat. Cool, but there's a bit of blue just to uh, fill us in. So you've got a left and right hand side from two pieces of fabric. Place them right sides together. Just put a couple of pins in that front curve because this is the part that covers your nose and mouth. Pop it in your machine um, and I'd suggest a two millimeter straight stitch with a six millimeter seam allowance. So that's the normal seam allowance um, like quarter of an inch seam allowance that you would know, use if you're quilt making or dress making. So that's one side. And do the same with your contrast fabric. Now, as I say, this is a quilting fabric that I'm using. It's quite a decent thread count. Um, again, it's one of those things, the, the health advice is changing all the time. Sometimes they recommend that you use three layers of fabric, in which case you can always double up on your fabric as you're sewing it together. But I've found that a closely woven quilting cotton seems to give a decent amount of protection. You know, you can't see a lot of light through it, but it is breathable, which is what you want, because you don't want the urge to take your mask off because you can't breathe. Now, I'm just going to set these seams with my fantastic clipboard ironing board. And also what I'm gonna do is just iron them over to one side.
And I'm resisting the urge to clip the curves on this because this is obviously the part that sits over your nose and mouth. And what you don't want to do is risk the mask splitting at that point. So if you were to clip your curved seams and then you wore it a lot or you had it too tight with the elastic, you could jeopardise that seam. And then once you've done that, take your two pieces, place them right side together, and line up that centre seam, and just pin it. Do the same on the other side. Just gonna pop a couple more pins. Try not to stretch this curve. I mean, you have got a lot of give on there because it's almost like you've cut it on the bias. just going to do because I think my seam alliance or my pattern cutting was slightly out. I'm just going to trim off that excess bit there. Hmm, that's peculiar. One side was slightly longer than the other and I've got no idea why. So you've pinned your two pieces together, right sides together. If you start about five centimetres away from the centre seam on one of the bottom flat edges because you are going to need to leave a gap in this to turn it out and then just stitch all the way around that mask Taking care on that curve not to stretch the fabric. And when you reach what would be the bridge of your nose, you might find it easier just to leave the needle in, lift the foot and move the fabric because it's almost a corner. My ability to judge six mil from the end of a seam is waning as we speak. and leave yourself about a two, three centimetre gap in that bottom seam to turn it out. Ooh. You don't really need much more than that because you are only turning out two layers of fabric. I'm just going to clip the corners for a need to finish. Grab the furthest corner away from your gap and simply pull it through. I do always ask myself why I bother ironing fabric when I've got to turn it the right way around. 
but it does make it much easier to line up seams and run it through your machine in the first place. And let's just grab a stocky knitting needle. Push out those corners. And then again, for a better finish, I'm just going to press these seams. Especially the ones that form the bridge around the nose. Because I want this mask to be completely reversible and it does look much better if it's folded directly on the seam. A lousy bit of turning out there and I know I've pressed it, I can't, oh there you go. So once you've done that, just for neatness, I would top stitch that seam. What I would also do is put more fabric under the press foot so it doesn't get caught in the feed. In the, uh, feed. Take care when you're going over that seam at the bridge of the nose because you have now got one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly eight layers of cotton just on that junction. And you might find it easier just to lift the foot and move the fabric through it without relying on the feed dogs. Now I haven't put a uh, a nose wire in this mask because I've found that actually it fits the face well enough and it sits on your nose and your cheekbones without the need to put that pinch wire in there. Um, but again, it's entirely personal choice. If you want to put one in there, there's no reason why you can't. So there you've got your mask, which is now reversible. And then to add the channels, Oh, I forgot to mention also, when you top stitch this, you're also closing up that turning hole. And then just to add your channels for your elastic, I pressed this really badly. Fold over about a centimetre of what you would regard as your favourite fabric, the side that you're going to wear the most. Turn the ends into the what you would regard as the lining side. And pin them. And then I'm just going to set my machine, I'm going to set the needle to the left hand position so that I can get a nice close top stitch line that's close to the edge of the fabric. Ooh. 
my foot pedal always seems to go for a wander. So there you go. You've got your mask. Now all you need to do is fit the elastic. Now I've found for comfort, I've cut a piece of elastic that is twice the length of this channel, plus about another five centimeters for tying the knot. So that makes it about 25 centimeters long each piece. And I've just tied them simply through the channel with a wreath knot, which are then tucked back in. And just tie that wreath knot like, you know, don't pull it really tight to start with because what you want to do, let me just take my glasses off, is you want to make sure that it fits your face comfortably. So pop it on your nose, hook it over your ears. And as you can see, this is why you don't need the nose wire because it sits there on your cheekbones. It's quite a tight chin on, uh, fit on your chin, which means if you haven't had time to pluck your chin in the morning, it's okay. And these are just a little bit baggy here, so what I will do is tighten that elastic up a bit to gather that up a bit more so it sits against my cheek. So they're ear loops. The other thing that you can do, friends of mine have remarked that after a while they do start to be a bit painful on their ears, is you can quite simply take your elastic, and this is six mil wide flat elastic, which would be easier to do with a darning needle, wouldn't it? Ooh. Thread it through from bottom to top of one channel. without sticking your darning needle through the fabric as you do so. And then take it back down the other channel from top to bottom. So you have one continuous piece. And I'm not gonna cut this yet. So you have loops top and bottom and then what you can do is you can put it, I think I may have made this too tight, you can put it across your face and it holds down below the bottom of your hairline so it doesn't rub on your ears quite so much but it's entirely personal preference. If you're making these for friends and family you might want to ask them what they would prefer but the other thing as well if you're making them for friends and family it's quite nice to just add a little personal message. So like with my one here, my keep safe, these are just decals that have been cut out with the Cricut Maker and their iron on vinyl. Because the other thing I've noticed, unless you really do genuinely smile with your eyes, you talk to someone in the supermarket, but they don't know whether you're smiling or whether you're angry. So I've just got some little ones here and you cut out the vinyl, what you need to do is when you do it on the Cricut Maker and when you design it on your design screen, you need to make sure you mirror the image so the lettering comes out in reverse. Weed out the pieces and then you can either use an easy press or you can just use an ordinary domestic iron. Just preheat your fabric a little bit and I found the best temperature for this is about two. Position your weeded vinyl, give it a quick rub over, and then just peel away the backing. And then I find it's, it's a good idea just to make sure you've got that bond by ironing it on the reverse. So you could, you know, I wouldn't suggest you put people's names on there, especially not if you've got children, you're making masks for children. 
but it's quite nice just to put a little message on there, just to cheer somebody up, because uh, I think it's going to be a while before we're going to see a smile in a, in a shop, for, but uh, hopefully face masks like these are going to make going out and mixing with the general public in an enclosed space a little bit easier to deal with. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you're OK. We hope you're going to come back and see us again very soon. But in the meantime, keep safe and we'll see you soon. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.